Now we are capable of creating and managing our database through PHP MyAdmin. But to be able to do anything useful with it, we need to be able to connect to it with a PHP script. And that's what we're going to do in this section. I'm going to htdocs folder which is located inside jamp folder. Let's create a folder named learning mysql and inside this folder create a PHP script named learning mysql now I'm going to launch the Zam control panel and start the Apache and mysql the server and the database are running if we open the browser and go to localhost slash learning mysql we will see our PHP file which will do nothing because it is empty open this script with your code editor the main challenge for this section is to connect using PHP to our database and that's actually pretty straightforward create a PHP block using the same way we have used in our previous lesson and then there's just a single command to connect to a database and that is mysqli connect here this i stands for improved some of you may have worked with databases before and search online and seen mysql connect it's a very popular way to connect to a database but i definitely wouldn't recommend it it's officially deprecated now which means it's not supported and it's certainly not as secure as mysql i connect if you want to learn more about the differences and why you should use this version rather than just mysql connect then have a quick google search it will give you all the reasons in detail why you should use this version but if you have never seen this before then just consider this is the best way to connect to a database it's worth noting that there is third way to connect to a database called PDO which stands for PHP data objects and again if you are interested in these things feel free to have a Google search and check out PDO I'm going to go for MySQLi connect because it's secure it's supported and it's much easier to use I think than PDO let us remove this one now we have to pass four variables to mysqli connect function the first variable is the server name which is localhost in our case the second variable is the user which is example user the third variable is the password and which is in our case one two three four five and the last variable is the name of the database which in our case is example underscore database let's pass this variable to mysqli connect function the first one is the server and the last one, second one is the database is the user the third one is the password
terminate it with a semicolon and save this code. Let's see what happens when we run this script. Absolutely nothing. That's because it's connected to the database. But we haven't told it to do anything with that connection. So it's obviously very useful to know in our script whether or not that connection was successful. If it's not, then we should give an error message of some sort to the user. So there is a built-in MySQLI connect error function which will be empty if there is no error but it will contain an error if there is one. So let's echo that for the moment and let's generate an error by misspelling the local host. I'm putting an X at the end and let's see what we get. So you can see you've got an error here. If I remove the X and rerun the script, then the message goes away. So that's pretty much it. Let's use an if condition to improve the quality of our way of connecting to the database. It's pretty straightforward. If there is no error, this MySQLI connect error will be empty. Remember? Simply put it as the condition of if statement then echo out something went wrong else echo out connection was successful let's remove it from here and run the script connection was successful now remove the password from here and run the script again this time we got something went wrong with a built-in warning let's bring the password back and have our connection was successful again so now we can connect the database from PHP script however in order to actually do something we have got to be able to take data from the database and be able to edit and update the data and that's what we will do in the next section